Hey, it's Monica, and today I want to try to answer the question of how to fix a marriage. So maybe you're in a relationship or a marriage where you're overwhelmed by all the different advice that you're getting from different relationship experts, different theories on what will work, different premises on how your problems came to be, and some of it is even conflictual. So what I've done is I've compiled um, some of the best nuggets that crosses all of the research and, um, and all of these five steps that I've um, narrowed it down to none of the experts would disagree with. So I'm hoping this, this will simplify things for you. If you try these for 90 days, uh, I will guarantee you that you are going to find some changes in your relationship that are very positive, even if your partner is not willing to join you. Of course, it's ideal if you do it together, but if it's just you following these five steps, for 90 days you're going to see some really great changes, and I believe that you can fix your marriage. The first thing is to remember that it's an illusion that you're growing apart. A lot of times we think, oh, we've just grown apart, we don't have the same interests anymore, he's changed, she's changed. It's really not true for the most part. Most people really just don't change that much, but what changes is our perception of the other person. Our perceptions are always very selective. Based on what's going on, based on how we feel emotionally, we will pick and choose what we notice to support our feelings. So when we are under stress or when, when you know the romance has faded, we have entrenched things that come up, it's hard for us to see the bigger picture. But I bet you that you can think of at least eight things off the top of your head, or maybe not even eight, maybe just three things about your partner that were there when you first met your partner that you really loved and appreciated and enjoyed, and those things are still gonna be there today. The same goes for you. There's still the same things that are inside of you and probably present on a daily basis that your partner might just not even be noticing. So just keep that in mind, and when you have that as your premise, which is, you know, we are pretty much the same people that we that fell in love with each other way back when, that's going to help you uh, implement the next step that I'm going to share. The next step is figure out what works. And when I say figure out what works, I mean look at the exceptions to the problems. Look at what's going on when your problems aren't there. So let's say you have a high-conflict relationship and you're fighting all the time. What's happening when you're not fighting? What was different on that day? Had you just exercised and you were feeling more relaxed? Were you feeling more valued at work? Had you had a really good conversation where you were really honest and you felt close to each other? What was different? And then that will lead you to step number three, which is to do those things. There isn't really any magic to this. There's no magic in magic. It's really just figuring out what works and then doing it. So um, step number three is to do those things. And even if your partner isn't doing them, and even if you're thinking, why do I have to do this? And it's not, I shouldn't have to do this. It should just be like this. Put that aside for now. It's going to be a moot point when you're feeling better. And um, when you're feeling like you're in a place of abundance and love and connection, those questions aren't going to matter anymore. Do them because it works. That's all you need to know. And I, I promise it will work. The next step is to break destructive patterns. Okay, so this is anything that is a, is a common pattern between you that's very destructive. Do the opposite of what you used to do in those situations. Or do anything different. If you feel like you can't do the opposite, do something different. Anything different will shift the entrenched dynamics. Anything. Um, if you are having a, you know, trouble thinking of something, you could act as if. That's kind of like a mental technique. It's not to be inauthentic, but let's just say that intellectually you know it's okay what that person did and my, my triggered reaction is just my triggered reaction. Act as if you're cool. Act as if your visceral responses are matching what you believe in your mind and see what happens because acting as if actually brings you there. So our actions transform our consciousness. It's not just that we have to you know, think it first and then we feel it. It's, it's that we have to behave that way and then we will start to feel it and then start to think it. So keep that in mind. And finally, step number five is to close your exits. And when I say exits, I'm talking about anything that takes you away from being present from your partner. It could be an emotional affair. It could be getting on the Internet too often. Anything where you're not present. It could be addiction. And Dr. Harville Hendricks talks about this a lot in his book, Getting the Love That You Want. Please notice what you're doing that takes you away from um, the, any opportunity for connection with your partner and close those exits. If you follow these five steps after 90 days and you haven't had any progress at all, shoot me an email um, or ask me questions along the way if you need to from monicahoyt.com. I hope this has been help helpful to you, and good luck, and until next time.